Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Carola. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Brush Pens, which were kindly gifted to me by Fidon Pens, a stationery shop located in Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. They're well known for um, their selection of fountain pens, inks, all kinds of pens and paper, and lovely stationery. I will also be comparing the Faber-Castell brush pens to Tombow dual brush pens, which are well known in the market of lettering, as well as Calliograph brush pens by Archer and Olive, which are relatively new to the market. And just as an upfront disclosure, I am an affiliate for Archer and Olive, as well as a brand ambassador for Tombow at the recording of this video. And I'm doing this collaboration with Fidon Pens to compare different brush pens on the market so that you can decide what you want to try if you're hand lettering or drawing. And if you're interested in trying these brush pens, I will include a little bit more information in the description below, as well as any affiliate codes that I have available to me that you can save a bit of money. Either way, I hope you find this video helpful in just seeing what hand lettering looks like with the different brush pens that are available. Especially if you're starting out, you don't want to buy all of the pens. So uh, hopefully this is a starting point for you. As you can see, I'm swatching the landscape set from Faber-Castell and I love these colors. They're so earthy in tone. And I haven't sped up this video, so you can see that I'm taking my time um, with the different strokes, especially in hand lettering. It's very important that you take your time and take it slow and let the brush um, sort of do its work. Later on in the video when I'm comparing these brush pens to Tombow's and Calliograph's, I'll talk a bit more about the um, tip size, but um, in general I'm finding that they're very flexible and um, not too broad. So um, you can get some detailed hand lettering with these brush pens. This was my first set of Faber-Castell brush pens and I found them really smooth to write with. One of the most common questions I get asked when it comes to hand lettering is what kind of paper is most compatible with brush pens? My first go-to would be Rhodia notebooks and pads which come in line, dot grid, blank, and you can easily find them in any arts and crafts store. I also really like Tomoe River paper which you can find in Hobonichi planners and notebooks and I will link a video where I talk about Hobonichi um, in general. I also like Maruman notebooks, which also have smooth paper, similar to Hobonichi. Um, they're made in Japan, and they're fountain pen friendly, as well as brush pen friendly. I also use brush pens on Archer and Olive notebooks and notepads. Um, their paper is ultra thick, so that uh, the brush pens don't bleed through to the next page. I like Stalogy, which is somewhat similar to Hobonichi, but um, the paper does feel a little bit different. So these are my top rec recommendations in terms of notebooks and notepads that are uh, brush pen friendly. So if you want to practice your hand lettering, these are sort of my top recommended um, paper to try. So to do my actual brush pen comparison, I'm going to use the Rhodia lined notebook, which was also gifted to me by Fidon Pens. And I'll be using two uh, Faber-Castell uh, brush pens, comparing them to two Archer and Olive calliographs, and um, two of the Tombow dual brush pens. And as you notice, they're all similar in the color shade that I picked, just so that you know, it's easy to compare them. So we'll start with the Tombow dual brush pens. And if you're not super familiar with Tombow, it's a Japanese brand and they're called dual brush pens because one end is a broad brush, which is great for hand lettering and drawing with, while the other side is a fine tip, which is great for, you know, just writing and um, filling in some details. And the Calligraph brush pens are created by a small American-based business called Archer and Olive. One end of the brush is a broad brush, while the other side holds a finer tip brush. 
Faber Castell is based out of Germany and their brush pens are not dual tip. So you get one size of brush, uh, which I would call probably a medium tip. So it's not super fine, but it's not um, too broad either. So to compare the different brush pens, what I want to do is um, swatch each brush pen as well as hand letter um, a word. And I chose Saturday because I'm filming this on a Saturday, but also Saturday is kind of my favorite day. So here we go. That's what we're going to use. And um, usually when I start a new notebook, I tend to go to the back of the book to do a pen swatch or a pen test. And so that's what I'm going to do with my Rhodia lined notebook. I'm using my trusty Tombow Fudenosuke soft tip um, brush pen, which is my go-to for all, pretty much all hand lettering um, that I do on the daily. And it would be interesting just to compare my regular hand lettering um, with the different brush pens and um, the strokes of each pen. So to start, I'll use the two Tombow dual brush pens that I have on hand and I'll show you what it looks like to do a stroke with the broad tip and then what um, it looks like to do hand lettering with the broad tip. Something to keep in mind with using the broad tip um, on the Tombow dual brush pen is that you should push down firmly but gently. So don't push down too hard and take your time when you're hand lettering. Um, I find that using dual brush pens takes a bit of practice because um, the broad brush obviously gives you broad strokes so you can take up a lot of space and see pretty much every little imperfection in the lettering. And I like the fine tip part of the dual brush pen because you can use it for regular writing um, to add to your hand lettering so it gives it a little bit more um, interest. But you could also use the fine tip to correct mistakes in your hand lettering um, if you want to or uh, you can use it for more details in your hand lettering by adding shadow to the letters. So next we have the Calliograph brush pens, which also come with a broad tip on one end and a fine tip on the other end. I find that the broad tip is pretty comparable to the Tombow dual brush pen broad tip um, in that it also has a very broad stroke and um, a thin stroke when you're lifting up the pen. And unlike the Tombow dual brush pen, which has a more detailed fine tip on the other end of the pen, the Calligraph has a fine tip brush pen, so you can hand letter smaller words with finer detail. I find that the finer tip brush gives a lot more control, but you can also use it for adding shadows or uh, more details to your broad strokes. So next up we have the Faber-Castell Artist Pit brush pens, which as I mentioned are not dual tip, so you get uh, one size of brush. But as I'm lettering with them, I find that the tip is actually pretty flexible. So you can get a somewhat broad stroke with them, maybe not as broad as the Tombow dual brush pens or even the Calligraph brush pens, but it's broader than I actually expected from just looking at the tip. And I find that uh, with some practice, if you press down pretty gently, then you can get a very fine 
um, hand lettering strokes, which is very interesting uh, because you can't tell just by looking at the brush tip uh, what kind of what size you'll get of strokes. And I found it pretty flexible and surprisingly so. So here is a close up of the different um, swatches of the pens that I compared. Up top are the Dombo dual brush pens, then the Archer and Olive Calligraph brush pens, and then the Faber Castell Pit Artist brush pens. So I would say I'm pretty impressed by the Faber Castell Pit Artist brush pens. I felt like I could easily control the size of the stroke, even though it's not a dual tip brush pen, but I can definitely see myself using it for daily hand lettering. Thanks so much for watching, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!